How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. I'll be your host on this CFL talk show, Uzzies Huddle. In this video, I talk about my takeaways from week 13 of the 2021 CFL season. But really quickly, before we get started, if you want to support the show, the best way to do it is by hitting the like button. It only takes two seconds, and it makes a massive difference for the channel and helping me get it out to more people on YouTube, and I greatly appreciate it. And if you can also leave a comment down below, it really helps me out as well. And with that said, let's get into today's video. So week 13, not a lot of surprising results here, but I think important results nonetheless for the standings as we're starting to get a very clear picture of how they're going to line up in terms of the seeding this uh, year in the CFL. I mean, we've got a hell of a race out east that's uh, providing less clarity, but we're, we're have a pretty good idea of who the six teams are going to be who are going to be in it, barring some crazy run. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, let's start with Ottawa and Calgary on Friday night. A very forgettable game for me. I just, not a lot that I took away from this game because Calgary, it didn't seem like they played well throughout a lot, lot of this game against an Ottawa team that we've seen get beaten up um, time and time again this season. And Ottawa just always seems like they play Calgary tough regardless of what year it is. Obviously, the, the Grey Cup a few years ago with a big upset uh, is the prime example of that. But I think Calgary, I was a little bit underwhelmed by their performance. They just really didn't click as much on offense as I thought they would. Uh, Bo had a pretty accurate first half, if I remember correctly. But I think ultimately, uh, just they didn't put enough points on the board uh, for me to feel like uh, this was like a get-right game for them. And for Ottawa, Caleb Evans got another start for this team. And they need to give him more reps uh, because he has that athleticism that um, you just rarely see. And you could just tell... If he just gets more uh, time under his belt, he could be a really good quarterback in this league. And honestly, he's been asked to do a lot uh, in his just rookie season, his true rookie season in the CFL. Like a lot of guys, they come over and um, it'll be their first year as a starter. But it's not uh, usually your first year that you come to the CFL. Usually you get a red shirt year if you're just a true rookie American quarterback in this league. And uh, he's a true rookie this year, and he's he's done pretty well in certain spots this year uh, in those handful of starts he's made. But ultimately, the inexperience is showing uh, the last few weeks. And Ottawa, that's probably the best you can really say about them at this point. Kenny Stafford, at wide receiver, the veteran uh, midseason pickup, it's been pretty good for this team since coming over. Uh, he had a great catch in the end zone in this game, and uh, I was happy to see that for him. But not a lot to say about the Red Blacks at this point in the season. Again, just building for next year and seeing uh, who's worth keeping around on this roster uh, from that point of view. And then Edmonton and Hamilton. Uh, this game was over pretty quickly in the first quarter, basically, uh, when Hamilton just raced out to a three-touchdown lead. And uh, this was really the first time this season that I think the Tiger Cats offense has played up to their 2019 levels um, because... Honestly, and this is, we're already in week 13. This is the first time we've seen it. Uh, and yet, Hamilton's still right in the thick of things, which is kind of scary uh, from the perspective of other teams because uh, they just have had a very mistake prone season. But this week, they were just absolutely clicking. Jeremiah Mazzoli played one of the best football games I've seen from him in a very long time in this game. Uh, just attacking the defense deep down the field uh, in the short to intermediate game, really using his legs to. Uh, scramble around and play that kind of backyard football uh, kind of style that has made him have success in the past in this league. And I think that's really important for him uh, to get more and more confidence. Obviously, you still have Dane Evans there, who I still believe is the better quarterback between the two. But Mazzoli's really playing really well right now. And you got to be happy regardless of who's out there. If you're a Tiger Cats fan, it seems like they just have a really great relationship and that they're, um, they, they feel like they're both contributing no matter what, if they're on and off the field. So uh, Hamilton, you feel really good going into the next couple of weeks. If you can beat BC on Friday, uh, it's going to be very crucial to uh, securing a potential home playoff game here and maybe even the first seed. If they win the last three games, they win the tiebreakers, especially with Montreal losing last week to Saskatchewan. Uh, so that's going to be really crucial for Hamilton, seeing if they can get a home playoff game this year and try to get to that home Grey Cup. So, um, again, we're going to be really interesting, but huge win for the Tiger Cats versus the Elks. And then for Edmonton, uh, just a really poor performance. It just seems like everybody's 
uh, giving up the body language on all these players. So many mistakes. Um, you just see guys just uh, taking out their frustration in the second half. And um, obviously the Simone Lawrence controversial hit for sure. But then, you know, just the escalation of that, how quickly that uh, escalated. Uh, a lot of guys on both sides just doing stupid things, especially uh, Cameron Kelly who spit on a guy. Uh, shame for that, by the way. Uh, but I think Edmonton, you know, it's just another uh, loss and another disappointing effort at home. And that's really the most discouraging thing about this year for Edmonton is how poorly they played at home in front of their home fans. They really haven't given their team anything to cheer about all season with their two victories coming up on the road. So just a really disappointing year for the Elks fans. And again, we're just building towards next year. And I mean, we're still mathematically alive in the playoff race, but it just, it's hopeless at this point. And then the really entertaining game this week between BC and Toronto, uh, a game I didn't get to see live. I was working during this time, but I watched the full replay on uh, TSN. And it was a really interesting game. A lot of stuff happening. Um, obviously, I think BC, they desperately needed this game. And they played like it. I mean, they didn't come out of the gate really strong. I mean, they surrendered the 10 nothing lead to start the game. But you saw the way they battled back. I think Mike Riley had a very gutsy effort. He's just one of the uh, most likable guys in the league, I think. Just the way he's, uh, he's played behind this poor offensive line uh, for the last few years. And just taking hit after hit keeps getting up. Just a really tough guy, uh, and, you know, just crazy plays happening in this game. You got that Shaq Johnson catch along the sideline uh, where he bobbled it and still was able to catch it. Um, just not a whole lot uh, of bad things to say about this game for either side. I thought BC uh, probably deserved a better fate in this game considering their missed field goals by their kicker. And when you think about it this year for the BC Lions, two of their losses – They've been involved in two crazy games where their kicker really decided the game. You think of the first game of the year against Saskatchewan. They go fall way behind in the first half and then come roaring back in the second half. And really the difference is just the field goal kicker who missed like three kicks that game. Uh, very disappointing. Uh, and then, you know, this week, I mean, uh, you have a chance to kick a game-winning field goal on the at the buzzer really at the end of the fourth quarter. And you can't get it done. You get the rouge that sends it to overtime, which is was kind of wild there. But I think, um, you know, it's just really disappointing to lose games that way. And it just seems like BC, I mean, they're still technically alive. And if Calgary can go on a skid there, um, maybe they sneak in here. But it just seems like they've lost hope falling to 4-7. and seven, And uh, they're just a long shot to make the playoffs at this point, in my opinion. For Toronto, it wasn't a very impressive performance, especially from this offense. Um, McLeod Bethel Thompson, I didn't think he played that terribly. I mean, he had some really bad misses. I mean, uh, there was one on like a, a slant and go, and uh, he had a guy wide open. It would have been for basically, um, but he completely missed that one. But there was other plays that i see seen his receivers just not make the plays for him. And so I thought it was just a really all-around sloppy offensive effort from Toronto, just not being able to finish drives. Uh, Boris Beatty, thank God they had him as their kicker because um, he's really the one that saved them in this game. And again, they probably shouldn't have snuck out of here with the victory, but they did, which is the most important thing. And Toronto actually has a pretty easy schedule the rest of the way. Two of their last three games against Edmonton and Ottawa uh, should be two victories there. But that other game between them and Hamilton going to be very crucial to deciding potentially the first seed in the East Division and that playoff bye that essentially just wins you a playoff game. Um, going to be very crucial, and I'm very fascinated to see that matchup again. And then the fourth game between Saskatchewan and Montreal. Let's start with Saskatchewan, who I think it's time that we start giving the Saskatchewan defense a lot of credit for what they've accomplished this year. In the preseason, before the preseason, actually, in training camp, they had some awful luck. Four Achilles injuries. Uh, I think three of them to defensive players. Nelson Lacombo, the number two pick in this year's draft, probably would have played a big role for this defense considering all of the uh, Canadians that they played back there in the secondary. And then Larry Dean at middle linebacker, very uh, crucial to this team's success potentially this year as a starting middle linebacker who's been a all-star in this league before he goes down to that injury. And 
the way that they've replaced those guys and masked those injuries, a lot of the guys like Luchez Pierrefoy played a great uh, role this year. He's moved around a different position, played a little strong side linebacker, played a little bit of safety uh, from his normal halfback uh, position. He's just been really crucial to this team's success. And I think a lot of these additions along the defensive line, Garrett Marino, uh, Jonathan Woodard, uh, just been a really crucial to this team's success this season. And I think it's time that we start giving Saskatchewan's defense a lot of credit for what they've accomplished this year. And they won this game for this team. And then for Montreal, I mean, a very disappointing game. You fall from first in the East down to number three, virtue of this loss, and then the tiebreaker that you lose against Hamilton. Uh, very disappointing loss. And then uh, your offense really doesn't play well all day. A lot of missed opportunities. Stuffed on a quarterback sneak at one point, I believe. Um, a lot of bad miscues, a bad interception by Matthew Schiltz, who ultimately has one of those bad games. Not one of the worst games we've seen from a quarterback this year, but um, just a really disappointing game that uh, was definitely a step backwards for this offense. And then they pull the trigger and put Trevor Harris in for the final uh, half a quarter, and he actually looks pretty good. I mean, you just see the experience. I think the processing and the quicker decision-making is there, and that's the advantage of going to Trevor Harris there. And when he was in there, he was actually moving around really well. This offensive line didn't play any better when he came in there, but Trevor Harris was just avoiding tacklers and actually scrambling for yards, and that's something we didn't see this year in Edmonton. A guy that's never been known as kind of a rusher in this league, uh, but he was using his legs, and that's very a good sign for the Alouettes going forward. And I think Ultimately, they are going to start Trevor Harris. They definitely were not just going to bring him in to be the backup. I mean, I think that was the plan all along was him to start at some point, the expectation. It was like if Schultz has a great run, and um, no disrespect to Matthew Schultz, but if he has a great run, yes, he can hang on to the job. But I think that uh, the likelihood was just Schultz having a bad game and then Trevor Harris taking over and um, being that experienced quarterback that could potentially – win them some playoff games. Remember, there's only one quarterback in the league that's won a playoff game in the last two seasons, and that's Trevor Harris. And I think a lot of people, for all the hate that this guy gets, I think he's uh, one of the better quarterbacks in this league still. And I think the surrounding situation in Montreal is much better uh, than he had at Edmonton because I think the offensive line, their head coaching situation is a lot better. Play calling. I think Kari Jones is just a really good communicator. Uh, they have these big play vertical wide receivers that can uh, you get the ball in their hands and they can make a play for you. Um, a good combination of different targets, intermediate targets, William you know, stand back in the backfield. So I think those are great signs for Trevor Harris going forward. These matchups against Winnipeg are going to be huge for the Alouette season. Then they finish with Ottawa, I believe. So I think they probably have to win one of those games against Winnipeg if they want to hope of finishing with. Um, a home playoff game out of all of this. But again, disappointing effort this week against Saskatchewan, and uh, we'll see how they bounce back. But with that said, those are just my thoughts about week 13 in the CFL. Be sure to let me know in the comments section about all of the above of what was talked about in this video. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.